Women Up Radio, designed to facilitate women's empowerment, improve your career, develop your talents, incorporate your passions, achieve fulfillment and success. Hello, this is Women Up Radio, supporting Empower Women. And today we're talking about empowerment and what it is without mind-body health and what specialised kinesiology can do for women. I'm joined in the studio by my guest, Alexis Costello, a Touch for Health instructor, a SIPS, that's Stress Indicator Point System instructor, creator of the GEMS programme and publisher of Specialised Kinesiology magazine and also a holistic practitioner. So welcome to the programme, Alexis. Well, thank you so much for having me. I am really excited to talk to people more about kinesiology because this is sort of what I do. So I'm glad to get this opportunity this morning. Lovely. Thank you. Alexis, start by telling me about your work and particularly about specialized kinesiology and SIPs and GEMS. What inspired you to make this your vocation? Um, Well, to start with, you need to understand what specialized kinesiology is. So kinesiology itself, the word means the study of motion. And kinesiology is taught in a lot of universities around the world as something that people do for sports. So you're looking at muscles and how do muscles function. And maybe somebody who's a runner has an injury. So how much um, stress can we put on this muscle? How is that interacting with another muscle? When you put the word specialized in front of it, however, we're doing something a little bit different. Now we're still muscle testing, but we're not testing the muscles necessarily to see how strong they are. What we're doing is using them as indicators to see what's happening deeper in the body. So we're starting to look at energetic imbalances, where there's stress in the body. It's a really interesting way of using the muscles as a biofeedback mechanism. So I I feel like I need to put the differentiation out there because the word kinesiology means different things in different places. But what we do is specialized kinesiology and muscle response testing. When I got into working in natural health, it was really interesting because my family had already done muscle testing right from when I was little. And yeah, my grandmother had actually worked with a uh, sorry a chiropractor who had studied under. George Goodhart, one of the guys I will talk to you about later when you ask about history of kinesiology. (laughs) And um, he had taught her how to muscle test, and she had taught my mother. Therefore, it was just a normal thing when I was younger. You know, if you got a cold, you would get muscle tested to see what vitamins you needed in order to make yourself feel better. If you um, just felt a little bit icky, somebody would check to see what was going on in your body and you know, what it is that you could do, whether you needed a food or a supplement or just to have uh, some tea and a good rest. And so this was sort of my normal growing up. Yeah. I realized later that that's not normal, but <laughs> at the time it was normal. And so when I grew up and moved away from home, I ended up getting a job in a health food store, kind of bluffing my way into the position because I already knew enough about what vitamins did what from um, watching my mom and my grandmother for years. And then when I started working there, I I just fell in love with it. I loved it so much. And so I started taking courses in herbology and iridology um, with anatomy and physiology components. And then from there, started studying aromatherapy, and then, you know, once you do aromatherapy, you have to learn how to do massage, because you need a way of putting oils on people, so you start doing massage. And <laughs> it's absolutely fascinating, because yeah. I, I love anything that's natural medicine, alternative medicine, things like that, because, in fact, my mother, and my mother, if she was alive today, would be, oh God, how old would she be? She was born in 1920, so she'd be old, basically. She'd be nearly 100. Um, And she never went to a normal doctor unless she had to. She always went to homeopathic doctors. Um, So for me, going to a a normal doctor was really unusual. Like you, I didn't realise that this was actually not really very normal because my mother was different it's so much better. It really is so much better. But anyway, carrying on. With, when you're saying about 
muscle testing, what sort of situations, what sort of illnesses or symptoms or things like that would you use it for? Because I don't really know much about it, and I'm sure a lot of other people don't. So why would they use it? What would be a, a reason for, for having it? I mean, at the risk of, of sounding kind of silly with this, literally anything. Like Muscle testing is great for literally anything because what you're doing is you're seeing where the stress is on a certain issue. Yeah. So when people find me in my office, it's for such a huge variety of things. It might be because they've gotten a serious diagnosis and they're working with a, a chronic illness, mm -hmm. or it might be that they're finding a lot of stress at work and aren't dealing with it very well, or it might be that they're trying to deal with their emotional stuff. Because what the muscles do, they're not, uh, they're not symptom specific. What they're doing is they're telling me, is there stress on this in the body? Yeah. And then it allows you to kind of gather the stress yeah. and then help the body to get rid of it so that it can heal itself. The whole premise of specialized kinesiology is that your body is amazing and your body will heal itself. All it needs is for maybe a little less stress and a little more information in order to do so. Okay, so what's the, what's the origin? How did it start? What's the origin of specialized kinesiology? It really came out of the work of a few chiropractors in the late 60s and early 70s who started noticing correlations between um, specific physiological complaints and areas of muscle weakness and then areas of subluxation in the spine. Yeah. So they began noticing that, for instance, people who were having complaints in these muscles and in the stomach might have a certain vertebrae that was consistently out of alignment. And so they started kind of charting this a little bit and noticing those connections and then researching the Chinese meridian system mm -hmm. that you would access traditionally through acupuncture or acupressure, yes. and then starting to put together this um, traditional Eastern way of looking at energy and the connections between things with these Western tools of looking at the spine and the muscles and um, the chiropractic associations. And so it's, it's a marriage of these two systems, really. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's great because what you can do when you're working with the muscles is then see whether or not the energy or the chi is moving properly through the meridian just by checking the response of the muscle. And then there's different techniques that would help to integrate that muscle response so that now the energy, yeah, is moving properly the way that it's supposed to. Yeah. So there were these two chiropractors that were really spearheading this movement um, one was Dr. George Goodhart, and the other was Dr. John Thee. And in the early 70s, they had a little bit of a split in that Goodhart was wanting to continue working more with chiropractors and therapists. And so from that was born what we call applied kinesiology. Yes. And then John Thee was more interested in creating a system for lay people. So he had this vision that, you know, on every street and every family, there would be somebody who would be able to work with these muscles and be able to help the people around them. And he created Touch for Health. And Touch for Health is sort of considered the foundation of specialized kinesiology. Right. So then there were all these, other, um, all these other people who got involved with it and really contributed. There was Richard Ett and Alan Beardall. And we use Chapman reflexes and Bennett reflexes. And those are all things that people can research if they're into it and want to learn more about the history. But really, we ended up with these two really fascinating systems of kinesiology. And the specialized kinesiology branch is the one that most of us in Canada kind of draw from yeah. because it's the one that doesn't require you to have that sort of hands-on training as a doctor, right, as a doctor of chiropractic or or something like that first. Okay. I, it sounds absolutely fascinating. So, and you also, you've created your own program called GEMS. So tell us about that. What, what does that do specially, and how did that come into being? Ah, uh, GEMS is my baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it stands for Goal Element Mode Stack, and... It came out of being a Touch for Health instructor for about eight years when I started working on it. 
and watching people go through the Touch for Health program, which is a really, it's an amazing program that has all of these great balances. And so people go through it and they learn all these fascinating tools for how to help the people around them yeah. feel more balanced, have more energy, have less pain, less stress, all of that. But what I found was that as with so many things, what works brilliantly in class doesn't always translate to practical skill in real life. Yeah. So in class, all of these balances and things work just perfectly because everybody kind of knows what to expect. But then when people would leave the classroom and actually try to work on their friends, they would find that people wouldn't walk in being like, you know, I need a 42 balance with um, metaphors and color today, yeah. which is the kind of thing we would be practicing in a classroom setting. People come in and they say, my wrist hurts. Yes. They come in and they say, I can't get my kids to listen to me when I talk. Or they have some other area of stress like that, right? Yeah. yeah. And so how do you take these things that are in these wonderful little boxes and actually translate them? Yes. to work with the people who are walking into your office. So that was part of it, was just being able to help people to, I call it unpack the boxes. Yes. Like when I'm teaching you Touch for Health, I have to give you these things in all these boxes because when you're learning them, they need to be set up that way. Yeah. They're set up that way for a reason. But then once you get home, you need to unpack the boxes in order to actually be able to use everything effectively. Yeah. So that was part of it. Um, the other part of it is that GEMS actually has two components. The first part I call GEMS Flow, which is working with a flow chart and scan sheets to help you make your Touch for Health practice more efficient. Yeah. The other part of it is actually a business training. It's really out of the idea that holistic practitioners can be really bad at business. Yes. So we are... We are generous, caring, intuitive people who do not do marketing or uh, bookkeeping, <laughs> those, those kinds of skills. There's things that are really hard for people in my industry, like asking people to rebook or asking for payment for a session or even just being able to talk about who you are and what you do clearly yeah. with the group. And so the second day is really set up to help with with that and to help empower the people who are taking the class so that they feel really confident in moving forward with this as a career. So I, I feel like the more of us that are out there and the more we talk about what we're doing, the better it is for all of us, right? We need to create the energy. Yeah, and that's a great idea because you're so right. When you say um, someone comes in saying, my wrist hurts and it just doesn't fit into the compartments that you've sort of studied I see exactly what you mean it's it's really I think that's great it's wonderful and so with that well with all the things that you do how can these help women and particularly in the workplace because obviously most of the people that are going to be listening to this are women professional women who are working so how can it help them have a better day at work or at home or cure their problems? I feel like in a lot of ways, um, kinesiology gives us back our power. Mm -hmm. Because especially as women, I think it always seems like our bodies are maybe betraying us a little bit. Like uh, everyone you talk to has adrenal burnout or they're worried about their thyroid or they're suffering from some aspect of their reproductive cycle. Yeah. Or, I mean, even just, filling out and falling down when we don't want it to, right? Um, I, I feel like the idea that your body can heal itself is really important. And understanding that it's just overwhelmed with too much stress right now and that we can change that, right? Yeah. And then the other part of it is the ability to care for our families. So when you're working with these techniques, it gives you something practical that you can do. I, I mean, I really got into this when my kids were small and the idea that when one of them got sick, I wasn't powerless. I didn't have to immediately take them to the hospital or something like that because I was worried. I had things that I could do in order to help them feel better. And yeah, there's definitely times that you need to take them to a doctor or something like that. But um, just that idea that I have tools, you know, I'm not stuck yeah. ever. Oh, that's 
sounds great. Yeah, and as women, you know, we're so often in caregiving roles, whether it's with our children or our partners or our parents or just our friends. Yeah. And so to have more tools is always a good thing. Yes. And you remember that um, this isn't solely physical, right? The kinesiology works with emotional and mental health, and that can have a huge impact on the workplace yes. because if you are – if you're not balanced in all of these aspects of your health, then you don't have the ability to run at your full potential. Yeah. Also, particularly in business, there's so much stress and anxiety and fatigue and lack of energy and motivation. Those are the, the typical things that everyone's suffering from, which obviously stops people running at their full potential, like you say. So from the sound of it, um, it can boost your general health so you've got more energy but does it also combat things like stress and fatigue and anxiety oh i mean it it definitely does but what i what i find really fascinating about this field is that it works on the individual not the problem yeah. so it's not like there is a specific thing that we do for um fatigue for instance it's more that you're acknowledging that stress and imbalance can come from any level. So we are addressing the physical, the emotional, the mental, the spiritual, the energetic, and also understanding that it can affect any level. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, something like anxiety might have a nutritional root. You might have a deficiency that's creating a lack of neurotransmitters that are needed for the brain to be perfectly in balance. Or it might be that you have a food sensitivity that's gone undiagnosed that's causing that feeling of anxiety. Or it might be caused by some childhood trauma. Or it might be caused by a musculoskeletal imbalance that's creating problems for the nervous system. So those are all possible causes for somebody's anxiety. And no pill is going to work for all of those causes. So what kinesiology does is it helps you to find the stress, whatever whatever that stress might be, right? It could be any of those things. Yeah. And then get rid of that stress so the body can establish the balance. So it's about you and how you're feeling right now, not about working with a specific condition. Yeah. And uh, it's really important for me to kind of underline that because in a lot of countries in the world, working with a specific condition um, it would be a legal problem for us, right? That's If I start saying, oh, I can treat your anxiety, that's me practicing medicine without a license. That's a, that's a bad thing. But if it's like looking at where is there an imbalance in your body that might be creating this stress and then helping you to create balance out of that, yeah. now, we're, now we're doing something. Yeah, yeah. And what about the impact on physical health? I mean, if we feel fit... Physically, it's got a, a great beneficial effect on our mindset and our emotions. So can you use kinesiology or specialized kinesiology to improve physically in general? I mean, almost like with acupuncture where it's preventive rather than curative. Would you say that that's the, the type of situation it would be good for? Um, I mean, really, it works with the physical body. It just depends on, on what the person is, is needing, right? Yeah. So, um, for instance, there are modalities of specialized kinesiology that are very physically based. Some of the things I work with are really looking at muscle compensation patterns and with stimulating reflexes so that the body's structure is really well put together. Yeah. But I mean, really, you, you can't be your best. You cannot reach your full potential if you don't feel well physically, right? Yeah. Because you need to be clear-headed and have energy in order to feel powerful or to feel passionate. Yes. Like those, those are not passive feelings, right? They require huge energy. So if all your vital energy is going into just maintaining your health from day to day because you're dealing with a constant physical pain or inflammation or some degenerative condition, yeah. then you really can't be vibrant and empowered. So, yeah, getting the physical body into alignment is, is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And some modalities of natural health or holistic health, I feel like they almost downplay the physical body because it's all energy, right? So they, 
want to just talk about energy, but the way that that energy is manifested, the, the physical vehicle for that energy on earth is through the body. So you yeah. need for it to work properly and to be the conduit. Yeah, I so agree. I think I'm going to um, take out this part of the, the interview and do a separate recording and send that to all of my clients. <laughs> I think it is so important, starting with what you eat, literally the fuel that you put into your body, because your mind needs that, your body needs that, and until they're all working well, like, like a well-oiled machine, you can't be your best. So you can't do your best at anything. It's well, for me, it's all got to be done together, and it starts with the body. Your mind can't be better. You can't be stronger. It all comes down to the body. That's, so I'm going to cut this out, and I'm going to send it to all my clients. Right? I don't know if you've ever heard of um, Sam Gracie. He wrote a bunch of books. He was really known for creating Greens Plus. He talks a lot about uh, alkaline diets and that sort of thing. Yeah. And I was at a training seminar with him once, and we went out for dinner. And um, so I'm sitting next to him while we're having dinner. And he was like, remember that everything you eat, every cell in your body requires certain things in order to rebuild itself and in order to function. Yeah. So you literally are what you eat. And we hear people say that, but we don't always think about it. Yeah. So when you're looking at that big greasy hamburger and, <laughs> you know, and that, that fast food, white bun, whatever, you look at it and you go, do I want this to be my heart? Do I want this to be my brain? Do I want this to be my skin? Yeah. And you compare that to how you feel when you look at a meal that's prepared with love, that maybe you've got a big salad and you've got all of this fresh food in front of you. Do I want this to be my heart, my brain, my skin? Yes. And it just, it hit me. I'm not quoting directly because this was about 10 years ago that we had this dinner, but it just hit me on such a deep level. Like, yeah, when you're looking at your food, when you're looking at what you take into your body, this literally is going to become every cell in your body. Yeah, yeah. So take care of it, right? Yeah, exactly. Because when I look at fat, I mean, I'm, I'm very food conscious and health conscious and things like that. But when I look at fat, I just think of furred arteries and I think, well, if I've got furred arteries, <laughs> I can't move properly and my brain doesn't work properly and I'm going to be old and horrible. And then I look at sugar and I think, oh, that immediately is tired and grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> so I have images with all the different foods, you know, mental images of what part of my body is going to be badly or well affected by what I eat. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm crazy, but it makes such a difference. You are listening to Anna Letitia Cook at Women Up Radio. Thinking about mind body health in general, why is it so important to empowerment? You need to have that balance in place. The, the physical and the mental and the emotional all need to be in alignment before you're able to really take full charge of your life and able to move forward with it in the way that you want. Yeah. I, mean, I, I look around at the people that I see right now and everybody is just so busy, right? Everybody's running around all the time being busy, 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 but not necessarily actually accomplishing things. Yes. And I feel like our bodies are doing that a lot of the time. There's so much just base level stress happening yeah. that they're busy all the time. They're busy, 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 and they don't have a chance to actually summon up the deep energy that you need in order to move forward um, properly in your life with, with full force and with full dedication. Yeah. And so, again, by finding those little areas of stress and clearing them away and allowing the body to rebalance itself, it does help you on all levels. And one of the most gripping things about working with people with kinesiology is when people come in, and they come in because maybe they have some kind of physical complaint. They come in because they've got back pain or they've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia or, or something of that sort. And you start working with them, 
And it's not just that the pain goes away. It's like all these other aspects of their life start changing. Yeah. And people don't always see at first that their relationships changing, their energy levels changing, yeah. um, their ability to concentrate and focus and remember detail, that these things are all related, but they are. Yes. What overall recommendations would you give to help us improve our mind-body health? What? I don't want to bore you with basics because you guys <laughs> all know. I mean, everybody knows things like you should eat well and drink lots of water and get some sleep. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that the thing that would be different is you need to understand what stress really is. Stress is anything that creates a burden for your cells. And when the burden is greater than the energy that they have available to them, they will start to break down. Yeah. So if you understand that you have a specific threshold for stress, but that that's all kinds of stress, mm -hmm. then it changes the way you do things. So we, we tend to think of stress as being things like, um, oh, I've got a big deadline for work and I need to get all this stuff done before Friday. That's what we tend to think of as being stress. But there's also nutritional stress from you know, eating the junk that we were talking about before. There's environmental stress because you're dealing with toxins yeah. or you might be fighting viruses and bacteria that you aren't aware of consciously because they're in the air all the time. And, you know, those things all contribute to the amount of total stress that your cells are dealing with. Yeah. So if you say that one aspect of your life is getting more stressful, like you do have a big deadline at work, Yes. then it becomes even more important to take care of all those other things, right? To eat well and to take your vitamins and to rest and to exercise yeah. because the one aspect is contributing more to that total stress threshold. Yes. But I feel like what we tend to do is almost like, you know, how people don't break their diet by having like one little treat. It's like, well, I'm off the wagon anyway, so I may as well eat the entire box of cookies, right? Um, people tend to yeah, people tend to do that with their stress as well. It's like, oh, well, this one thing is out of control right now, so we're just going to take this week off. We'll just, you know, give ourselves free reign for all of that in this period of time. And really it needs to be the opposite. So that would be one thing that um, I would say is really important for people. Yeah. Uh, another thing is that I have a channel on YouTube and um, if you look on there, there's a few little videos, like there's one, for instance, that my son made for me where I am a Minecraft character. Yeah. And um, it's me going through the muscle movements that you would do in a Touch for Health muscle dance. And so it's just activating specific muscles that correlate with energetic meridians in the body. Yeah. And just activating them in a sequence helps to move that energy so that you get this little balance. Or there's another little video of me on there tracing the energy, tracing the meridians, so you yes. can see all of the energy pathways and how they work. Or there's another one that I could suggest, um, I believe it's just called Switch On, Zip Up, Tune In, or something like that. And they're just little things that you can do, again, mostly from the Touch for Health world, that help to sort of center the brain and the body and get the energy flowing. And any of these videos, it would take you less than five minutes in the morning to run through it. Yeah. But I can almost guarantee that if you were to, for a week, you know, do some, some of these things every morning, five minutes every morning. W will you send me the links and then I can put the links on the page so that everyone can find them while, um, when they're listening? Yeah, I can email them to you. Yeah, perfect, and I'll, I'll add them to the page. That's and what I normally suggest for people is do a little self-assessment, right? Before you do one of these activities, just check in with yourself and think, on a scale of 1 to 10, where is my energy at right now? On a scale of 1 to 10, where is my pain or discomfort level at right now? What's yeah. my stress level at right now? And then just see if after doing this quick little activity, what's happened you might find it, it, it's not a miracle thing it's not going to go away but you'll probably find that your energy has gone up by a couple points and any stress you're feeling in your body has gone down by a couple points yes. and sometimes that's all it takes to give you the boost that you're going to need to get you through your day right yeah, exactly exactly no I, that's so true because when you're really really stressed or upset or worried or whatever sometimes just 
turning it down a tiny bit, it's enough to take the edge off and make you feel better. So I may sound great. I'm definitely, I will have to do your, your videos myself. It sounds a very good tip. So, <laughs> and any last tips? Are there any other actions that you can suggest for finding energy and inspiration? Things like that. Anything else you want to leave us with? Uh, find a specialized kinesiologist in your area and go talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> good idea. Very good idea. <laughs> I, I read a lot about um, muscle testing and kinesiology and how it all works. People can check out my website if they're interested in that at all. Yeah. I, I really do believe that the reason why this is important is because your body can heal itself. Yes. And yeah. if you can just get rid of the stress and have the information, then you can fix anything. I've heard amazing, amazing stories from people over the years. So wow. I'd say you know, look into it. And if it's something that speaks to you and if you have questions or anything, then get in touch, right? And you can ask me or you can look around. Most countries have a association, a national association, Yes. Um, for your listeners in the UK, your association is called the Kinesiology Federation, and it's run by really amazing people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you can find your, your local association, and usually they will have a directory of some sort that can show you practitioners in your area. Yes. And contacting them doesn't mean, oh, you're stuck signing up for a bunch of sessions. It might be as simple as just talking to them and seeing whether you connect with this person and whether they have something that would help you. Yeah, yeah. And you've uh, been to several different countries, haven't you, with workshops and things like that. So obviously it's getting better known and more popular uh, all around the world. I mean, have you been in a lot of countries? I know you, you're doing North America, Canada, Latin America, um, and I think you said Europe as well? Well, I'm on the board for the International Association of Specialized Kinesiologists. Yeah. So we do a big conference every couple of years, and we do a big meeting every year with um, basically all the national associations. So the the association from the UK, from Canada, from you know different countries. So I've been to a lot of different places with that group. You know, we've had meetings in Denmark and in the Netherlands and uh, in, in April I was just in Italy for that conference yeah. and it's amazing to meet other practitioners from all over the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, I leave here to go speak at the Touch for Health conference in the States and to do a little more teaching there and then in April I actually get to go to Moscow and teach in Russia for the first time. So, And also you publish a magazine. So yeah. where can people find your magazine? It's just an online magazine yeah. because it is um, designed to connect this ridiculously specific niche market of people uh, around the world. Um, you can find it on the website gemskinesiology.com. Yeah. And if you send, send me that link as well, and I'll put that on the, the page with the, the interview as well. I um, will. That would be great because I think if people can find more information and they can find where they can go, I think it would be wonderful for them. It sounds so helpful, really, really helpful. The, the magazine I just started doing last year, I'm actually going to be publishing the 